I like to watch. I confess, I enjoy watching laughing babies, homemade cartoons, dancing girls, ranting pissed off old guys, the antics of other people's pets, the stupidity of young male jackasses, politicians and celebrities caught being human, clever student art projects, compelling amateur documentaries, and real-life action from the front lines of the war du jour. Along with hundreds of millions of other people, I like to watch videos on YouTube and other internet sites. Frankly, you would have to be dead inside not to find something emotionally or intellectually compelling on YouTube. It is ever more of the world brought to our computer screens by amateurs and everyday people armed with digital cameras, camcorders, webcams, and cellular phones. Founded in 2005, YouTube started out as a small, quirky video sharing site. And right from the start, channels like Smosh and other comedians gave it a reputation that could only be translated as the place where any wannabe director with a video camera and an internet connection could upload their amateur content for an audience of 18 to 24 year olds. But before Smosh, before PewDiePie, and even before Ray William Johnson, channels like Oakley's gained immediate popularity with a wide section of the YouTube community. Geriatric1927 is Peter Oakley's username, and the description for his content is as follows. Hello, I would find it difficult to tell you what I do here, as it doesn't fit into any one genre. As an 86-year-old, I reminisce about my life today, and stories of times past. I might cook a meal, or read you a story, or tell you what's been happening during the week in which I upload the video. It's kind of like shooting the breeze, so come in for a chat. Peter Oakley adhered to the video sharing site in August of 2006, making his one of the oldest accounts to date. And the reason for why I'm even talking about him is that through his series of autobiographical videos in which he shared details about his simple life as a retired widower, he managed to become the first ever YouTuber to hit 30,000 subscribers, making him the very first most subscribed YouTube channel in late 2006. What quickly started as a video sharing site for bedroom vloggers like Peter has evolved into the largest video sharing community in the world. Nowadays, it not only provides a forum for people to connect, inform and inspire others, but it also acts as a distribution platform for original content creators who had dreams of shooting for the stars in the media industry when nobody else would give them a chance. I think everyone should always have a few YouTube clips in their back pocket. One might want to share them with friends, at a cocktail party or around the water cooler at work. More importantly, a few favorite YouTube clips gives one a center against such a vast, changing media landscape. Vernalis is quick to point out that this is one of the most convenient ways to pass the time, entertain friends, inspire colleagues and share visions of the world. And as you might expect, there's a few YouTube videos that will forever remain great forms of entertainment. Gangnam Style serves as a great example here. Even five years after its official release, it still rakes in hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views on a monthly basis, making it one of the most viewed videos ever with 2.9 billion worldwide views. It is a perfect clip to have in your back pocket when you feel like showing how random the internet can get sometimes. And just like it happens with many other addictions, YouTube is constantly demanding a raising of the stakes, meaning one clip is never really enough. Vernalis calls this the YouTube effect, and it may only become more powerful and addicting if the next clip is crasser, bigger and more ridiculous than the previous one. What people fail to realize is that YouTube is very different from television or cinema in the sense that virtually anyone can perform both the role of audience and content creator at the same time. YouTube brought with it a whole new job market that is literally still in its teen years. 
The amount of YouTubers searching wide and far for editors, producers, sponsors, lighting technicians, camera operators, cinematographers, etc. keeps growing every day. And the media industry is closing its eyes. Because something that I will discuss further on in this series. And that is the fear of the new. Just like Strange Love summarizes, watching YouTube is an investigation into the world of ordinary people and their extraordinary online videos. In the last century, a lot of books have been written about film and television studies. But what about videos made by ordinary people? Videos made by hardworking, passionate amateurs outside of the institutional structure of the film industry. Who is writing the books about those? Well, if no one else will, I'll start by making videos. Because I've found a home on YouTube. And hopefully, anyone can find it too. <laughs>